Hey brewers, it's Paul here, and today we're gonna take a look at one of my favorite fermenters. This is the Firmzilla All-Rounder 30 liter. It's not very expensive, about $80 Canadian. And there's a bunch of cool accessories you can get for it, which I'm gonna show you. And also a couple features that I like about this unit. Number one is how easy it is to clean. It's got a nice large opening here, so it's easy to get your hand in there and you know scrub it out and make sure it's really clean. The size is good, 30 liters or just under eight US gallons. You can make you know, easily a five, six gallon batch in here without needing to worry about headspace or anything like that. Let's just go over some of the accessories that I use on it all the time. The number one thing I, I, I wanted was, instead of having an airlock attached, you can put on these ball lock connectors. They sell them in different colors, which is nice because you can know that, okay, I always put my CO2 onto the orange one and I put my beer line to my keg on the yellow one. But what these allow you to do is ferment under pressure. A lot of people like to use spunding valves nowadays, and instead of buying a super expensive stainless steel conical, you could do it right in here. You can get the Kegland spunding valve, put that on there. While it's fermenting, while it's creating CO2, you can tell it, or rather you can set the spunding valve to let's say 15 PSI, that's what I do. So if it exceeds 15 PSI, it'll let the CO2 out. Otherwise, it's forcing it back into the beer. Once you transfer this into your keg, it's already gonna be like halfway carbonated, so that'll save you some time. So fermenting under pressure allows you to do stuff like make a lager at closer to room temperature. You know, if you don't have a fermentation chamber, you can't ferment really cold, like 10 Celsius. You can uh, set your spunding valve, let's say 15 PSI, put your lager yeast and ferment it, you know, closer to 16 to 18 without getting tons of like sulfur notes out of the yeast. And then the other, accessory that I use all the time is the floating dip tube. So basically, you attach the tubing to one of your posts here. And then on the end, you could do one of two things. Just put a floating like a ball on here. So this will just keep it floating at the top. And then as you're transferring to your uh, keg, it'll go down. But this will suck up like any tube or it touches or anything like that. So a lot of people choose to put on a filter. So the filter goes on the tubing and then you'll put the floating stainless steel ball uh, on the filter. So that way it's floating on the top of your beer. Uh, this is filtering out, you know, hop chunks and stuff like that. One thing I will mention though, the tubing they give you it fits, I believe, both the 30 liter and the 60 liter all-rounder. So it's very long. And what I found is as you are getting your beer out of here and into your keg, it's gonna start to hit the side and get stuck. So I would recommend uh, cutting it shorter. I don't wanna cut too much off. Let's start with about that much and see. Just a little bit more. That should be perfect. All right, so we got that on there. We'll hook up the floating uh, ball with the filter. And now I'll show you how to rack it or transfer uh, out of here with CO2 into your keg. What's nice is if you're making a really hoppy beer, a New England IPA, something like that, oxygen is your enemy. So this allows you to do a closed transfer right out of your fermenter and into your keg. So I'll get that set up and we'll be right back. All right, so to do the pressure transfer, obviously you need a keg. Uh, you're gonna wanna purge it with CO2. So make sure you release all the pressure. You'll need just a piece of tubing with two ball lock liquid disconnects on there. We'll get this hooked up right away. I'm just gonna grab some keg lube and just lube up our posts. This really helps the disconnects come off and on a lot easier. It also prolongs the life of your O-ring, and it's very cheap. So we got all the pressure released. We're gonna hook this up to the uh, post that has the floating dip tube. That went on nice and easy. And I'm hooking this up to the uh, liquid out post on the keg. That way you're filling it from the bottom up. So now it's on there nice and tight. Uh, you're gonna wanna either leave your pressure release valve open or crack the lid on your keg for this or else it's not gonna flow. It'll build up pressure in here and it'll stop flowing. Just set your CO2 regulator to like three PSI. Hook it up. 
Unfortunately, it's just water in here. You can't really see, but it is flowing out of the fermenter and into our keg. And so once your beer is transferred into your keg, just turn off the CO2, disconnect it from your keg, close your pressure relief valve, take the gas off, and then you're ready to clean it. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention as well, all right, let's just get the pressure out of here. When you're setting your spunding valve, you can use your CO2 tank to double check that it's set to the correct value. Because when you put it on, there's no pressure, so the, leader, the needle's gonna be at zero. So I'll set my CO2 regulator to 15 PSI. Remove the uh, floating dip tube. We don't need it for this part. All right, so grab our spunding valve. I'm gonna close it about halfway. Now I have my CO2 regulator set to 15 PSI. And if you notice that your spunding valve needle is not moving, you probably have it hooked up the wrong way, just like I am. So there's an arrow pointing this way. That's the flow. So we're going to put it on the correct side and try again. Just adjust the knob until it's not letting CO2 out anymore. I don't know if you could hear that, but you can hear when the CO2 is escaping. So there you go. It's dialed in at 10 PSI. So you can take your CO2 off and then do the pressure release. And then it's dropped back down to zero. And then that way you can tell when your beer is actually fermenting. So just a quick tip on setting that up. And then the last thing I will, I will mention is the carrying strap that they have for this unit. I believe it's around like $15 or so. All it does is the base is separate from the fermenter. So when this is full of work, you probably want to be holding it with two hands. It's heavy and you don't want to drop it. So usually you'd have to ask somebody to carry the base for you while this keeps it all together nice and tight. The other thing is without it, probably not going to happen, but if someone were to bump it in, it's kind of top heavy, so it might fall off or, you know, that sort of thing. So having this on there just keeps it, uh, you know, all together. So there you have it. That's the Firmzilla All-Rounder 30 liter and some of my favorite accessories for it. I think bang for your buck, it's one of the best fermenters on the market. But what do you think? Have you, do you have one? Have you tried it? Do you have any questions? Please let us know in the comments down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to see more content like this. Cheers.